Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I really hope you enjoyed the first two parts of our Coreg series. Today, I hope you're in a great mood and ready to learn some seriously cool, old-school tricks for collision avoidance at sea. Totally forgot to share this key diagram in my last video. Here it is. Remember, the law always comes first. Company procedures and master's orders can't override it. Your main legal duty while on watch? Don't hit anything, okay? It's time to dive into the practical side of seamanship. So, imagine this. You're on watch, you see another vessel, and your radar decides to take a coffee break. No ARPA, no AIS, nothing. How do you figure out if there's a risk of collision? Today, I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that, using just your eyes and a bit of know-how. It's a fundamental skill every mariner must master. We'll be using the simple but incredibly effective technique of taking bearings. Whether you use a compass repeater, a polaris, or even just a fixed point on your own ship, I'll show you how a steady bearing means danger is brewing. We'll break down what steady bearing really means in practice and how even small changes can tell you a big story. But just knowing there's a risk isn't enough, right? The next big question is, what do you do about it? Watch how the other ship's bearing shifts. If it barely moves, you might be in for a collision. If it's coming toward your bow, that ship's crossing right in front of you. If it's heading toward your stern, it'll pass behind you. That white vertical pillar? It's your go-to reference for tracking those changes. Even without a compass, you can still keep tabs on how the other ship is moving. Sure, this method doesn't give you numbers like CPA and TCPA, but honestly, you don't really need them. So, we come to the second old-school trick we'll cover, is how much you actually need to alter your course to be safe. Is a 10-degree turn enough? Or 20 degrees? Need to make a bold change? It's super easy. Just adjust your heading so that another ship is on your port bow. It doesn't matter how many degrees you turn, just keep that ship on port bow. This move fits perfectly with the Colreg's idea of a substantial alteration. When another ship is about 5 to 10 degrees off your port bow, stick to that course. After a few minutes, another ship bearing will shift to about 20 degrees to port. At that point, alter to port until you see another ship at 5 to 10 degrees to your port side again. Keep doing this until you're back on your original heading or following your passage plan. Easy. This simple trick to avoid collisions has been passed down by sailors for ages, helping you communicate your moves clearly to other ships. No guesswork, just quick, safe, confident navigation without relying on electronics. Next up, we'll tackle two of the most debated topics in bridge resource management, timing and distance. When is the right moment to start your collision avoidance maneuver? Colregs don't give clear numbers on when one ship has to give way to another. It's tricky because while one vessel needs to move to avoid a collision, the other must keep its course and speed. Court and arbitration rulings are pretty clear about this. For open sea navigation, you should start your collision avoidance maneuvers 6 to 8 miles out, or about 12 to 9 minutes before the closest point of approach. But in busy areas like the Singapore Strait, it's different. There, Vessels often begin their maneuvers just one mile away, and that's totally normal. Like, it's pretty surprising to see a young officer trying to figure out the CPA and TCPA of a ship that's 15 miles away. Honestly, it's a bit of a legal mess since ships aren't really obligated to each other at that distance. Plus, measuring visual bearings or getting accurate CPA and TCPA with radar is nearly impossible from that far out. When you're out in the open sea, here's a tip. If you spot a target 13, 16 miles away, lock radars onto it and wait until it gets closer, about 9 to 10 miles. That's when you can really take a good look and decide what to do next. Just a quick reminder, Colreg is all about using visual bearings when the visibility is clear. Keep an eye on how those visual bearings change, check the radar CPA and TCPA readings, and compare them with AIS. Make sure everything lines up, and then execute your avoiding maneuver as we talked about earlier. Before we continue, if you could take a moment to like and subscribe, that would be awesome. 
You'll help others find this video and boost safety at sea. Thanks a lot. If another ship's heading your way on the port side, just stay cool, brew some good coffee, and think about your backup plan if it looks like a close quarter situation is unavoidable. Call regs don't give you an excuse when it comes to staying clear of other vessels. If it's clear that the other vessel isn't giving way, you may got to take action to avoid a collision, usually by making a sharp turn to the starboard or slowing down by about 30 to 40 percent. If it's clear that a collision is unavoidable, you've got to do everything you can to steer clear. This is super important. Remember, if you're on a stand-on vessel, you could be held legally responsible if a collision happens. Don't ever think, oh, I'm on a stand-on vessel, it's not my problem. That kind of thinking is a one-way ticket to disaster. Today, we covered how to avoid collisions just by using your eyes and how to mix those classic techniques with modern tech for the best results. In my next video, I'll show you how to use radar for collision avoidance, especially if your gyro and speed log aren't working. These are skills that will serve you your entire career, whether you have the latest tech or not. Mastering these basics is what separates a good navigator from a great one. Yes, same picture again. So, stick around, because this is the kind of knowledge that builds real confidence on the bridge. Thanks so much for watching. If you're finding this series helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you don't miss our next deep dive into the coal rigs. Stay safe out there.